Hey everybody, Michael Simon here doing our little daily dinners where we use everything in your pantry, um, show you all the substitutions so you can get a great meal on the table for your friends and family or whoever is kind of in lockdown or quarantine uh, with you. Um, so today we are going to do a one pan chicken. Um, we're doing chicken thighs, you could use breasts, you could use legs. You could use pork chops, you could use pork tenderloin, you could use uh, beef. So there's a lot of different options here for this one tray meal, depending on what meat you have. Key is if you are using chicken, you need to cook the chicken to 160 degrees internal temperature. You could do that with a thermometer. This whole thing is gonna take 30 minutes, so it's gonna happen really quickly. So the first thing we do is I have four chicken thighs here. Um, I'm gonna put the thighs in a mixing bowl. And then to, I'm going to start adding my other veg and so forth to this, and I'm going to season it all together. So super easy. Um, if you had a, like in the recipe, I put hard herbs. When I say hard herbs, I mean rosemary, sage, oregano, marjoram, things that are very stemmy and sturdy. Those work great in the beginning of a cooking procedure. If you are going to do uh, a soft herb, like a parsley, a cilantro, a tarragon, chive, you would put those in at the end. So four thighs, which is of close to two pounds. We're gonna quarter these sweet potatoes, two of them. I would add in the recipe, I put onion, but then we got a lot of requests. If I don't have onion, what could I sub? So four whole heads of garlic, skin on. I grabbed some cabbage because I have had some extra cabbage since St. Patrick's Day. So we're gonna do cabbage quartered. And then I'm gonna take an orange and quarter that also. Now we're just gonna season this whole thing up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna coat it in a little bit of oil. I just have olive oil here, not extra virgin oil, just plain old olive oil. And then whatever spice rub um, that you have or something that you prefer. I'm using Old Bay here, one of my favorites, especially with chicken. We're gonna sprinkle this on a couple tablespoons and then we're going to toss this all together just to kind of get everything as coated as we can. Did you get that, Liv? Yeah. Um, some of the questions that we had, I only have boneless um, chicken. Is that okay? Yes, boneless chicken is okay. If you have boneless chicken, you're going to want to cut your vegetables maybe into eighths instead of quarter because they are going to cook quicker. I have a half sheet right here. That's the size of this. And then we're just going to get everything to fit on our sheet tray. I'm gonna do something. Lizzie's got peanut butter cookies in the <laughs> oven, so she's going to get out peanut butter cookies. She's been baking today. Um, we're all just kind of keeping ourselves busy. All right, those oranges. Make sure everything's got a nice coating on it. Now, I also have my oven set at 475 degrees. So the oven is hot, so this is going to be a quick cook. Next question, Liv? Um, Susan was wondering if you can freeze garlic. If you could what? Freeze garlic. Um, yeah, you could freeze garlic. I've never done it, so, but, you know, you could peel it and freeze it. But you could also get it all peeled ahead of time, put it in some olive oil, put it in your fridge, and it'll last for five months, refrigerated. So, you really don't need to freeze it, I don't think. Oranges, sweet potatoes. And everything's just going to kind of fit in here pretty cozy-like. Chicken is skin side up. Garlic just kind of go on there. I left the skin on the garlic because we could squeeze the, it'll kind of roast the garlic and we could squeeze it out afterwards. If you have any extra oil or spice, put that on. And then I'm just gonna give it a little sprinkle of salt. Even though something like Old Bay has some salt in it already, it's just gonna need a little bit more. So there we go, pinch of salt, skin up, super hot oven, it goes in. We just let it work. What do you think about that, Norman? <laughs> little buddy all right if you have convection or fan in the oven you could turn that on now um, not a necessity I'm actually you hear my fan That's a loud. little little loud it's running a little hard could they still hear me live are they gonna be able to hear me with the fan so far we're okay we're okay all right now next thing that we're gonna get started as that is cooking is um, we're talking, one of the things I'm going to start doing on my Instagram page, which is at Chef Simon, 
is I'm going to start doing little 101 videos. Uh, so you guys could refer to the 101 videos if you have basic questions like this dish is going to have rice pilaf. So I'm going to do a 101 for rice pilaf. I'm going to do a 101 how to roast, a 101 how to braise, a 101 how to stew. It'll just give you guys some um, basic skill techniques that you could refer to if there's a question. We also um, put a list together of all kinds of substitutions uh, that we're going to get typed up and that's going to be on the uh, Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. Uh, I'll also put it on my social so then you guys could see, okay, I don't have this, I can use this. I don't have this, I can use this. So it is a giant substitution list with hundreds of items on it. I think it's going to make things easier for you. Now, pilaf. So for pilaf, I have an onion. This is just basic pilaf. I have brown uh, rice and I'm using stock. You could use water too. So a cup of rice, two cups of stock. If this was a white um, long grain rice, I go a, a one and three quarters cup. Brown rice takes a little bit longer, so I'm going two cups. Um, and then about a half an onion. Also, we're going to use some olive oil or oil that we will put in the pan. And a lot of questions, one of the questions a lot of people ask is what's pilaf and what makes pilaf pilaf? Pilaf is one of those things, it's both a technique and a dish. So the technique for pilaf is you are taking a rice, um, you are adding, you're doing onion fat, so oil or butter or whatever, and then your liquid. And the liquid depends, the amount of liquid depends on the type of rice. Like a wild rice pilaf would take four to one liquid. Um, a brown rice, two to one. A uh, white rice, one and three quarters to one. But they will tell you that on the bag or box of rice that you have, how much liquid it takes to cook it. So then the technique of pilaf is oil, sauteed onions, toast the rice in the oil, then add room temperature or cool liquid, you bring it up to a boil, you drop it to a simmer, you put the lid on, and when the liquid is gone, the rice is cooked. We then let the rice sit for a second, give it a little fork to fluff it up, and anything we want to garnish it with at that point, we can. Nuts, herbs, whatever they are. So first thing we're going to do is put in our oil. I'm going to go a little bit higher here, so medium high heat. And then I'm going to put in my rice to toast the rice. And then when the rice starts to toast a little bit, which is going to give it a nice nutty flavor, um, it also keeps the rice, like it's going to form a little coating on the exterior of the rice so rice doesn't stick together quite as much. But this is more of a flavor play than anything else. Once the rice starts to toast, then we will add in our onions and let them break down a little bit too. So it's interesting, two dishes that are like dishes and techniques both have to do with rice. Pilaf and then the other one being risotto. So risotto is a rice that you're constantly stirring, constantly stirring, constantly stirring to actually release the starch to give it that creamy consistency. Get in there, Olivia. And then um, a pilaf is a rice that you, you, once it comes up to a simmer, you don't stir it at all and you, then you kind of fluff it at the end. So it's two completely different techniques. We have someone asking if they could steam rice with stock. You could, but it's, I mean, it's, there's no need to really. Um, if you're gonna steam rice and you wanna get flavor up into it, you could put onions, garlic, you could put different things in the liquid steaming it, and then those flavors will raise up into the rice. Um, I mean, the stock will give it a little bit of flavor, but uh, I think it's a little bit of a waste of stock, in my opinion. I'd rather just see you put some like ginger or different spices or things like that in the water so then when the steam was rising, it would perfume um, the rice in that manner. What else we got, Liv? Sherry's asking if rice can be done in the oven alongside the sheet pan. Um, you can get this going, no, because the oven is at 500 degrees. 500 degrees will cook this at too fast of a pace. 
So if you wanted to put this in an oven with a lid, your oven would have to be probably closer to 270. I mean, remember, 212 degrees is the boiling point. So you'd have to lower your oven temp quite a bit to get it to simmer, you know, probably right around 200. But I've seen people make pilaf in an oven at about 325. It's just easier to do on the stove top, to be honest with you. A couple of people are asking about, um, should they rinse their rice before? No need, I never do. Some people do, I don't do it. All right, so that's all toasted. Now we take our room temperature liquid. I have double the liquid that I do the rice, so this is a ratio. So if you have two cups of rice, four, then you have four cups of liquid. If you have four cups of rice, you have eight cups of liquid, etc., etc. We're gonna give this a little stir now. A pinch of salt. One more stir. And then any, if you wanted to put in any seasonings or dry herbs or seasonings, you would put them in now. All right. So this is going to come up to a boil very quickly. As soon as it comes up to a boil, I'm dropping it down to a simmer, putting the lid on, and then we're going to be in a really good place shortly after that. Oh, Kelly has an important question. Are you still wearing your slippers? Yeah, huh? <laughs> still rocking the slippers. Norman hasn't chewed them up yet, which sometimes a four and a half month old puppy may do, but that's a good sit, buddy. Very good sit. Yep, I don't have a treat for you right now, but that's a good <laughs> sit. All right, so this is up to a boil. I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. I'm going to put my lid on. That liquid is going to get absorbed by the rice and evaporate. Once that happens, we have about another uh, minute to pause, then I'm going to fork it and mix it all together. So while that's happening, just some fun um, add-ins you could put here. Let's see, I got some cashews. Snuck up behind me because I don't know put my <laughs> belt on. That could have been bad. Um, so I have some cashews. This would be a fun add-on. Toasted cashews. These are unsalted. Um, I'm going to chop them up a little bit. We could put these into the rice when they're done. I also have I have a little bit of cilantro and a little bit of flat leaf parsley um, in the fridge. To pull that out, you could add that in. Um, if you had dry spices that you wanted to add, um, you would have put those in before we put the lid on. Um, but any soft herbs or nuts or um, another thing that would be nice folded into this would be a little bit of... Uh, like coconut cream or coconut milk if you wanted to go in that direction. Um, Jeff is asking if you have to keep stirring peel off like you have to with risotto. Nope. So that's the difference. Risotto, stir, 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 stir. Peel off. Get everything going. Bring it to a simmer. Put the lid on. It's gonna, all the liquid's going to evaporate. That will take 18 minutes and it'll be done at the max. You know, if you, if you, and then you're gonna, you'll give it a taste. If it needs a little bit more time, you could add a little bit more liquid. If it needs more time, it means you were boiling it too hard. So the a liquid, the liquid evaporated too quickly. Diane is asking if dried cherries or cranberries would be good in here. Delightful, Diane. You, um, you could also put in beans at the end. I know maybe some of us are sick of beans right now, but you could put in. Uh, beans at the end, any dried fruit would be fantastic, any fresh herb would be fantastic, especially the softer herbs like we were talking about earlier. Different nuts would be great, um, maybe a grate of fresh ginger or something like that to kind of brighten it up. I'm going to use those up those oranges that we put in uh, on the sheet tray. Those are going to caramelize a little bit, so they're going to give this kind of caramely sweet juice. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of that orange juice in here which is also gonna light it up. You could put a splash of vinegar in if you wanna brighten it up. So there's a lot of directions you could take um, once you get this done. <clears throat> Another great tip is if you're trying to save some time, you could do pilaf in a larger batch and then bag it when it's done. And like next, uh, at some point this week, we're gonna make crispy fried rice. So I could have pilaf that we made, we doubled up, and then I could turn that into a crispy fried rice dish later. So you would let it cool, you could put it in a resealable bag, stick it in your fridge. You could also let it cool, put it in a resealable bag, date it, label it, put it in your freezer. You know, if you're really trying to get ahead on stuff 
and save time. You know, I know right now, like, a lot of people have their kids home, everyone's sharing rooms, all that kind of stuff. So if you're trying to save time, so you spend less time over the oven at a time and more time with your family, that's a way to do it. If you're trying to get away from everybody for a little bit, you could just make a fresh batch every time and then you just have 18 minutes to yourself where it's completely peaceful. It's like a bath or a shower, but you're making pee bomb. Any other questions, Liv? Um, Anna is asking if a splash of lime would be good in here. Yeah, any citrus. A, a, a little pop of lime, any citrus would be good. I'm going to actually grab some herbs real quick, Liv. And Janine's asking uh, about adding cheese. Oh, cheese would be great. Um, like a hard style cheese, I think, would probably work the best. Um, like the grate some Parmesan in, or, you know, even if you want to grate some like aged hard cheddar in at the end, but that's all once the pilaf's done. If you try to put cheese in here now, you're gonna have a hot mess. You know, it's just gonna be a mess. Mary's asking, um, what number on the oven dial is simmer? Hers is set kind of like a one to 10. I, I'm a numberless oven. Um, I'm gonna say, I mean, look at it. Like look into your pot to see, you know, you could see, see how it's just got that little burble there? That's a simmer. So when your pot is doing that, that's the number. I'm gonna guess, I mean, every oven's a little bit different, unfortunately. I'm gonna guess three, if I had to pick. If I had to pick a number, I would guess three. But the best thing is, you guys look, really what I'm trying to teach everybody when we're doing these classes, the important thing is, is cooking, <clears throat> You know, we're teaching techniques so you could use any ingredients you want. Like, I'm using basmati rice here, brown rice, or brown basmati. You could use, you could do this with orzo. You could do this with uh, barley. You could do this with farro. Um, you could do this with wheat berries. But you just have to look at what the li amount of liquid it takes to cook those things. So... If, it, if, the, if the ratio of liquid on the bag says four cooked cups of liquid cook one cup of rice, you do, you do that, this technique, and that same thing. So once you learn the technique, you can make a million different things. Um, and that's really what I'm trying to show all you guys uh, as we go through this, because that's really what makes cooking easier and fun for everybody. We have a couple of people asking the best way to store ginger. Um, I just store it um, in... I don't wrap it, I just put it in uh, my drawer with my produce. Mm -hmm. And then I take it out, I peel it as I need it, and then I just, you know, the easiest way to peel it is with a spoon, actually. Um, and then I just put it on my microplane and go from there. Any other questions? Um, yes, they're asking if you're serving this dish with anything else. Nope. Um, but you could roast vegetables with this if you want, but that's, what else, did, like, look, on the sheet tray, we have sweet potatoes, we have citrus, we have cabbage, we have garlic, we have rice. What else do we need? We got it all. So whenever I'm doing these dishes for you guys, you certainly could add sides and stuff like that if you want different sides. But I'm always trying to think of it and make it a complete dish. Um, we have a fan asking, if you were to add mushrooms in this, when would you have added them? Um, if I was to add mushrooms, I would have put them on the sheet tray with the chicken. Um, would have been the best way to do it. They would have roasted just with the chicken. They'd be great. Then if you wanted to fold them into the rice, once they were roasted, you could cut them up and fold them into the rice at the end. Hey, Liv, look. Liz is in here right now, and I am going to steal a peanut butter cup. I see you. <laughs> 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 Those are good. I'll make sure that this recipe gets up on my Instagram page. Liz is an awesome baker. The funny story though, when she was making this today, she makes a batter and then she's cleaning up. She realized that about a cup of the flour never made it into the mixing bowl. She missed. I didn't have her glasses on, like I don't have mine on right now. And, she, and I think they're better than her regular chocolate chip cookie. So or I'm sorry, her peanut butter cookies. So omitting about three quarters of a cup of flour apparently makes better peanut butter cookies. Good job, honey. Good trick. All right, 
You might want to finish chewing. I don't think anyone can understand what you're saying. Oh, Liz, by the way, we've had a lot of requests for your granola. I was thinking about that today. Yeah, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. almost done. I got my garnishes. Well, you know, we could do a little bit of little. Lizzie, you want some ginger in the pilaf? What do you think? Yeah. Alright, a little bit of fresh ginger. We have someone asking, how would you what would you add in here to spice it up a little bit? You could put jalapenos in. Jalapenos you could have put in when you were um, sweating the onions. Would have been nice. You could put a couple drops of hot sauce in when it's done. Um, also, what, in the beginning of the cooking, you could have put cayenne or a dried chili in there. Um, you could have put chipotle adobo in there. So yeah, what, uh, like if it was a spice, you would have put it in the beginning. Um, or even a jalapeno you could have put in in the beginning. If it's like a hot sauce situation, you could put a couple drops in and fold it in um, at the end with no problem when you fluff it. What else? Um, we have... Everyone loves Norman. <laughs> uh, what's not the love about Norman? Other than he barks too much. A couple of people barking. are asking, um, like, what kind of knife is that? It's a chef knife, right? Yeah, Just this is that. a chef knife. I, you know, one of the things that I talk about all the time is, you know, you see these blocks of knives and sets of knives and all these things. I'm telling you, I've been cooking professionally for um, 30 years, and 99.9% of what I do, I do with a chef knife. I just rarely use any other style knife. So I would say instead of spending X amount of dollars on this whole set, just find a chef knife that you love. You, you basically need a chef knife, a serrated knife, and if you want a smaller knife to work with a paring knife. And that, those are all the knives you need in your kitchen. Um, unless you're you know, a butcher or <clears throat> doing that kind of stuff. But when I'm just cooking, a chef knife. This is, this is a nice one. It's like a nice little eight inch chef knife, very easy to use. Now look, Ginger, take the spoon and you just run it across the skin and it's just such an easy way to peel the ginger. Just all the way around and then the ginger is peeled and then all we got to do is grate it at that point. So you don't need a knife, you don't need a peeler. Just a spoon works great right here. Take out that little nub. Um, Joy has a question. She made your chili the other night, but she put in too much hot spice. How, Ooh, would, she, how would she go back on that? It's hard to go back once you get it hot. You almost have to, you could extend the recipe and then mix the two together. Um, people say put a potato on it absorbs it. But once it's really hot, it's hard to get the hot out. You could add a little bit of sweet, which could balance it out a bit. Or you could add a little bit of fat, but I mean, you don't really want, who wants cream or something like that in their chili? Uh, you could mix in sour cream. Um, it obviously is gonna change the appearance of the chili, but it'll tamp the fat back. So fat or sweet is gonna bring it down. If you add acidity, it's actually, I think it, to me, pal on the palate, it raises it up a little bit. Oh, our chicken's looking good. We are almost there, Liv. Give this a twirl. I hope Norman likes it. Yeah, Norman thinks things are smelling good for him. Rice is so close. Derek's asking if you think it's possible to use too much ginger in, this, in a recipe like this. Well, it's your palate. <clears throat> you know, everyone's palate is different. So I never... <clears throat> I never, it's not my job to judge what's too much or too little. I can only say what I like. Um, if you're cooking for a, a large group, I think you have to find that happy place. Um, Norman. Norman, quiet. I think you have to find that happy place. Um, but if you're just cooking for yourself, you know, you don't have to, uh, you can make it your style. It's like, like Kyle. Kyle likes food that's insanely spicy. Like, if he makes it for himself and I eat it, I, I'm literally like next to the dog lapping water in the bowl. And I like spicy. Um, but for him, it, it, it's, it can't be hot enough. You know, where for me, it just gets, it gets to be a little bit too much. Um, so 
cook by your own palate. If you love ginger, it's going to be hard to put in too much ginger. You know, if, if you hate ginger, the smallest amount, and you're going to be upset with, with how it comes out. So don't, don't worry about, if you're cooking for yourself, don't worry about it. Make it so it's perfect for you, not everybody else. Liz Simon took my, oh, there it is. Um, we have a fan asking, what is your favorite kitchen tool? My favorite kitchen tool is, I would say, I'll, I'll give you a great chef knife, or a very usable, user-friendly chef knife, a, uh, a microplane or a rasp, and a bench scraper. Um, if you guys have been watching this for the first eight, nine days, or have been watching me for whatever the past 20-something years, like, I can't survive without these three tools. Everything I do in the kitchen, 90% of it I do with these things right here. I'm always moving things with my bench scraper, keeping my board clean. I use the chef knife for everything. And then I love to grate cheese, spices, um, <clears throat> things like ginger, you know. And so this is a very versatile piece of equipment for me too. So I do most of my things in the kitchen with those three things. Like if you were to look at my cutting board before an Iron Chef, those things were always there. Always, because I know I could do almost everything with them. Liquid is almost gone. Kayla is asking how to safely thaw two chicken breasts if she wants to cook that with this. Um, the safest way to do it is if you could do it ahead of time, you could put it in your fridge the night before, it'll get most of the way thawed, um, or you could run it under cold water. Um, so either of those methods work. So we got nice crunchy skin chicken. You can see the beautiful little bit of roast and char marks um, on our on our vegetables, which is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna grab a plate. Start setting this up before we finish this peel off. Mm. What do you think, people? I mean, it smells good, I'll tell you that. So A couple of people asked if they could cook pilaf in a rice cooker. I've never used a rice cooker. Um, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. I've just never used one. I'm, 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 I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. So, I'm going to take two pieces or so of, of sweet potatoes. And these are, you know, because we cut everything right, you could see these are cooked all the way through real nice. It's really tender. That's what you want. Nice big hunk of cabbage. Cabbage, it's funny. Cabbage, uh, when I was growing up, I hated cabbage. And I, it, it was more the smell of cabbage cooking that I hated. Um, and I'm still not, I don't love boiled cabbage. But cabbage that has been roasted, that gets a little char on this or grilled, totally changes the whole situation. So if you are not a cabbage fan, I highly recommend you try it this way. Listen, I don't know if you could hear this, Liv, but super crispy chicken skin. Again, that's because we did it at that high temp. Place some of that. Susan down. was asking, how do you keep everything from sticking to the tray? Well, we tossed it in olive oil, and it was hot, so it's just going to release real good. Liz is going to be mad because I didn't put foil on this tray, um, but or parchment. But I just like doing it on the, the tray itself. I don't know. It's just a weird thing for me. Um, also, the garlic clove. So, like, technically, there's a garlic clove for each person. Um, this is very hot. You could do this with tongs, too. But So, I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to... It'll slide right out of the skin. So, you have a little bit of roasted garlic on there, which is beautiful. I'm going to take... The orange is going to go with the rice. Jennifer was asking, how do you know what size to cut the veggies so they cook appropriately alongside the chicken? Well, it's, these are bone in, so I knew how long they're both going to take, so I cut them into quarters. If it was bone out, the chicken would have cooked much quicker, so I would have cut these into eighth, so they cook quicker too. I mean, it's just experience, but you could see the visual of where they are size-wise. All right, rice is almost done. <laughs> rice is winning right now. I didn't get the rice on quick enough. So if I got the rice on a little quicker, my timing would be perfect right now. Let's see where it is. Taste like texture wise. This 
still got to finish so it is tender. Okay, a lot of people are confused with Liz and Liv, and I think we need to clarify. All right, so here's, you guys, it's, I know it's, it's confusing some people. Liz is my wife and partner of 20, 27, a lot of years, 27-ish years. We haven't been married that long, but we've been together 27 years. Liv is who does all of our social and actually is with us um, through the quarantine. Um, because her mom is also our best friend. So we're all kind of together through this quarantine. So Liv is Olivia Anacone, who does all my social. Liz is Liz Simon, who is my wife, that is my significant other. Liz is the baker. Olivia is the <laughs> iPhoneer. <laughs> the, the executive iPhone producer. Yeah. Um, but we're, this is pretty much a... I mean, we I, we don't. Someone said yesterday, I can't believe you have a production crew at the house. It's not a production crew. It's me cook, doing the prep, cooking, writing the recipes, um, Liv doing all the video and helping it make it streamlined, and Food Network uh, helping us out to keep everything kind of rolling along. So and Liz um, keeping us in check when we forget things. And Liz, yes, Liz is uh, helping us and making cookies and all that good stuff. And entertaining. And entertaining. Yes. And moral support. So I'm going to rush this just a second. Normally what I would do, so everybody knows, when the pilaf is done, when the liquid is evaporated and gone, I would let it sit for another um, minute or two. Then I would fluff it and add all my stuff. But since I'm a bad chef and my chicken is ready, but my rice isn't, I am going, you know what? I'm going to eat the chicken. And then, then this will be done. That's, see, that's what we're gonna do. Liv, I just had to think this through. We could do this separate. All right, fork, knife. So, this has the spice on it. It has, you know, you could squeeze some of that orange on there. We, we use the Old Bay. Sweet potato, delicious. Cabbage, kind of cooked all the way through and tender, but it got some of that if you've ever had like fried or hard rolled Brussels sprouts, that's what this tastes like. A couple of people were saying they wanted to throw Brussels sprouts in on this recipe. Brussels sprouts would be great. Check them. If you use carrots, do you have to peel them all the time? And that is I never hard. peel carrots. I use organic, I, you know, I, I use best carrots I can find. I never, I just wash them real good in the sink, but I don't peel them. Chicken, look, skin is crunchy. Meat is cooked through. Really, really good. And I used Old Bay, so I love the flavor in here. Use your favorite rub, and you'll be good in that manner. Liz, can I have a fork? I'm sorry. You may. See, everyone plays a very important role here. See, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, you very much. Grab my ginger. See all that liquid is evaporated. Oh yeah. See, liquid's gone. Rice is cooked through. It's not sticky. You know, a lot of people say why. Like when it's sticky, it's you probably cooked it too, put too much liquid in, or you use the sticky rice. Parsley. The nuts. Fresh ginger. Amy's asking, what kind of salt do you use to finish with? I, in a, oh, in a perfect Ooh. world. That's right. <laughs> hey, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, when you start back up, you see that? A little behind the back orange patch. Oh. Um, the orange juice. And then you just fork this all together. I, in a perfect world, I like to finish with sea salt, cooked with kosher salt. But see that, how beautiful this rice is now? Mm. And you could really, I mean, Liv, you could smell it, they could, but you smell the citrus, the ginger, you're going to get the texture of those nuts, and you could just, I would have presented this. You know, go right with our chicken. You'll see it in the beauty, it's going to be fantastic. Look but you have the beautiful rice, you get the texture of the nuts, the cilantro, the citrus. Really, really good. Bright, nice texture, pilaf, 
chicken, cabbage, sweet potatoes. That's it. Now, thanks for coming, Norman. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Norman. I'm, I'm happy that you're uh, paying attention. Um, we're going to be here tomorrow at 5 o'clock again. Uh, if you want more recipes, you could also go to Food Network Kitchen app. You could go to the Food Network Kitchen app um, and you can get more recipes from there. You could also make sure that you tag at Food Network or at Chef Simon if you post a picture of the recipes because we love that. And you could also hashtag Simon Dinners. I'm done cooking, that's why I'm picking up Norm, so don't panic. Hey buddy, have a kiss. Mm. Thank you, bye guys, see you tomorrow at five.